Today we're going to delve into one of the darkest chapters of European colonialism, a story of exploitation, greed, and inhumanity that is still haunting us today. Today, we're going to talk about the notorious King Leopold II of Belgium and his brutal rule over the Congo Free State. Now, some of you may think that history can be dry and boring, but the story we're about to unfold is anything but that. This is a story of a king who was driven by his insatiable lust for power and wealth and who saw an entire nation as nothing more than a resource to be exploited. Under Leopold's rule, the Congo Free State became a hell on earth for the local population. Millions of Congolese people were forced into labor camps and subjected to brutal working conditions, while others were killed or maimed for resisting or failing to meet the king's quotas. The exploitation was so severe that the population of the Congo fell from 20 million to 10 million during Leopold's reign. And yet, this dark chapter in history is still not widely known. Many people have never even heard of King Leopold II, let alone the atrocities he committed in the Congo. But as we'll see today, the legacy of his reign is still felt in the Congo and throughout the world. It is a story that deserves to be told. So without further ado, Let's dive into the horrors of King Leopold's rule over the Congo Free State. Before that, do not forget to like and hit the subscribe button to catch more content like this. To understand the horrors that took place in Congo under King Leopold II, we need to start at the beginning of his reign. In the late 19th century, European powers were on a scramble to colonize Africa, exploiting its resources and people for their own economic gain. King Leopold II of Belgium, a cunning and ambitious ruler, saw this as an opportunity to build his own personal wealth and power. Being a shrewd monarch, he saw the need for Belgium to have a colony like other European powers. He was also a ruthless businessman who saw the potential for enormous wealth to be gained from the exploitation of Africa's natural resources. However, Leopold's ambitions were not limited to economic gain. He was also motivated by a deep-seated racism that saw black people as inferior to white people. In his view, Africans were not capable of governing themselves, and they needed European guidance to develop. This racist ideology provided the justification for the brutal exploitation of the Congo and its people. Leopold chose Congo, a vast region in Central Africa, for its abundant natural resources, including rubber, ivory, and minerals. In 1876, he established the International African Association, a philanthropic organization that aimed to promote scientific research and humanitarianism in Africa. He claimed that his mission in the Congo was to bring civilization and Christianity to the people of Africa. However, his true motives were purely economic. He aimed to use the organization to facilitate his plans for colonial expansion in Congo. In 1879, Leopold hired the explorer Henry Morton Stanley to undertake a mission to the Congo River Basin with the aim of establishing Belgian control over the region. He hired Stanley to explore and map the Congo. Stanley would go on to sign treaties with several local chiefs, claiming to establish trade agreements and alliances. But in reality, these treaties gave Leopold control over the land and its resources. Stanley was successful in his mission and Leopold used the information he gathered to establish a colony in 1885. This was a vast territory covering over 900,000 square miles in the heart of Africa. The tyrant king claimed the Congo Basin as his own personal property, not as a colony of Belgium, but as his own private estate. He called it the Congo Free State, a misleading term given that the people living there were anything but free. Leopold ruled the Congo Free State as his personal property, with the Congolese people serving as his subjects. His reign was marked by a reign of terror and brutality, in which millions of Congolese were enslaved, tortured, and killed. Under Leopold's rule, the Congolese people were subjected to forced labor, brutal violence, and systemic exploitation. His primary interest was the rubber trade and he forced the Congolese people to work in rubber plantations under horrific conditions. The people were beaten, mutilated, and killed if they failed to meet their daily rubber quotas. But Leopold's brutality was not limited to the rubber trade. He also forced the Congolese people to mine for copper and diamonds, while the profits from these resources went directly into his own pockets. 
The Congolese people were also subjected to forced labor on construction projects, such as the building of the Matadi Kinshasa Railway, which claimed the lives of thousands of workers due to disease, starvation, and brutal working conditions. Leopold also employed a private army, the Force Publique, to enforce his rule and maintain control over the Congolese population. This army was notorious for its brutality, and its soldiers were known to commit horrific acts of violence against Congolese men, women, and children. His agents used a variety of tactics to terrorize and subjugate the Congolese. Some cut off the hands of those who failed to meet their quotas, while others would hold family members hostage until the quota was met. They also instigated conflicts between different ethnic groups, which further destabilized the region and created an environment of fear and mistrust. The Congo Free State became known as a place of unspeakable horror. The atrocities committed during Leopold's rule in Congo were not hidden from the rest of the world. Reports of these atrocities reached Europe and the United States, sparking outrage and condemnation. The public outcry led to the formation of the Congo Reform Association, a group of activists who campaigned for an end to the atrocities in Congo. Despite this, Leopold attempted to justify his actions by portraying himself as a benevolent leader who was bringing civilization and progress to a backward and uncivilized people. He claimed that his rule was necessary to bring order and stability to the region and to protect the Congolese people from the alleged savagery of other African tribes. However, these justifications were nothing more than thinly veiled excuses for the exploitation and oppression that took place under his rule. In reality, Leopold was exploiting the Congo for his own personal gain, and the Congolese paid the price with their lives. One of the most infamous incidents that took place during Leopold's reign was the massacre of the people of Lusanga. In 1895, his agents ordered the village to provide 3,000 kilograms of rubber, which was an impossible quota to meet. When the villagers failed to do so, the agents descended upon the village and killed over 300 people, including women and children. They then cut off the hands of the dead and forced the survivors to carry them as proof that they had killed the required number of people. The brutality of Leopold's reign in Congo was not limited to violence and exploitation. His agents also brought diseases such as smallpox and sleeping sickness, which decimated the population. They destroyed the social and economic fabric of Congolese society, erasing cultural traditions and forcing people to abandon their way of life. Leopold's brutality in Congo was so extreme that it is estimated that up to 10 million people died as a result of his policies. This figure represents approximately half of the population of Congo at the time. The horrors of the Congo Free State were exposed by a number of brave individuals, including the journalist Edmund Morel and the missionary Roger Casement. Their work helped to raise awareness of the atrocities being committed in the Congo and contributed to the eventual end of the Mad King's rule. Edmund Morel was a British shipping clerk who became aware of the exploitation in the Congo while working for a Liverpool-based trading company. He noticed that ships were arriving in Liverpool filled with ivory and rubber, but they were not returning to Africa with any goods. He suspected that the ships were being used to transport slaves, and he began investigating further. Morel soon discovered that the ships were being used to transport rubber and ivory that had been obtained through forced labor. He founded the Congo Reform Association in 1904 to raise awareness of the situation and to lobby for change. Morel's efforts were instrumental in turning public opinion against Leopold and his regime. Roger Casement was an Irish nationalist who had previously worked for the British government. He was appointed British consul for the Congo Free State in 1901 and was tasked with investigating allegations of human rights abuses. What he discovered was shocking. Casement found evidence of widespread torture, mutilation, and murder in the Congo. He documented his findings in a report that became known as the Casement Report. The report detailed the horrific conditions under which the Congolese people were forced to live and work. Casement's report brought the situation in the Congo to light and convinced the British government to take action. In 1908, the British government organized an international conference in Brussels to discuss the future of the Congo. The conference led to the end of Leopold's rule over the Congo Free State. His reign over the Congo came to an end in 1908, 
when Belgium took over the administration of the colony, partly in response to the global outrage caused by the revelations of atrocities. However, the Congolese people continued to suffer under Belgian colonial rule, and it was not until the mid-20th century that they were finally able to gain independence. To bring freedom to the Congolese people, Congolese activists fought against slavery and oppression on their people. One of the most prominent of these activists was Simon Kimbangu, a Congolese Christian preacher who founded the Kimbanguist Church in the early 20th century. Kimbangu preached against the oppression of the Congolese people and was arrested and imprisoned by the colonial authorities, where he died in 1951. Another important figure in Congolese history is Patrice Lumumba, who led the country to independence from Belgium in 1960. Lumumba was a prominent anti-colonial activist and was elected as the first Prime Minister of Congo after independence. However, Lumumba's leadership was short-lived as he was overthrown in a coup d'etat just months after taking office. Despite his brief tenure, Lumumba's legacy as a leader who fought for the rights of the Congolese people is still remembered today. He is celebrated as a hero in Congo and across Africa for his role in securing independence from colonial rule. Leopold's reign was characterized by a mix of ambition, greed, and ruthlessness. He was known for his extravagant lifestyle, his love of luxury, and his obsession with power. He was also known for his charming personality, his wit, and his intelligence, which he used to gain the support of many influential people in Belgium and abroad. We can say Leopold's legacy in Belgium is mixed, on the one hand, he is remembered as a visionary leader who transformed Belgium into a modern, industrialized nation. He played a significant role in promoting economic development, expanding the railway network, and modernizing the country's infrastructure. On the other hand, Leopold's involvement in the Congo has left a dark stain on his legacy. His regime's brutal treatment of the Congolese people has been widely criticized, and his actions in the Congo have been described as nothing short of genocide. As we have seen, Leopold's quest for wealth and power resulted in the deaths of millions of Congolese people and untold suffering and exploitation. The numbers are staggering, with millions losing their lives, either through direct violence, starvation, or disease. And yet, despite this immense human toll, Leopold was able to maintain his grip on power and his reputation as a civilizing force in Africa. But let us not forget the resilience and bravery of the Congolese people who resisted and fought against this brutal colonial rule. From the anti-slavery campaigns of early Congolese activists like Simon Kimbangu to the uprising led by Patrice Lumumba, the people of Congo have shown time and time again that they will not be silenced or oppressed. As we reflect on this dark chapter in history, we must acknowledge the ongoing legacy of colonialism and its impact on the world today. It is only by confronting the past and working toward justice and reconciliation that we can build a more equitable and just future for all. Thank you for joining us today. Remember to like and subscribe for more thought-provoking discussions on history and its impact on our world.